Hello. So good that we can meet here. I can't believe last week we soon met at the church and our platform was the pulpit where we share the good news. Today our platform has changed, which is the internet now. Despite what our platform is, I'm so glad we could spend time and meet together and we can spend time to learn more about God. Well, before we start, let's take a moment of silence. And we're going to talk to God together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you are in control. And we thank you that you hear our prayers. Lord, we acknowledge our sins. We ask for forgiveness. Lord, we acknowledge our deep need for you. We ask, Lord, that you journey with us. We lift up this world into your hands, Lord. The challenges that we have with COVID-19. May you bring healing, bring recovery, bring relief to so many that are suffering. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this week, we continue our sermon series, Letting Go. Our first week, we talked about letting go of control and replacing it with God's control. Letting God have his control. And then in our second week, we talk about letting go of our expectations, our subtle idols, those, those idols that we put up before God. Last week, we talked about letting go of feeling superior. Sometimes we feel superior because we don't feel love. So we got to replace it with God's love so that we don't feel that we're more superior than others. Instead, we love with God's love. And today, we're going to talk about letting go of our enemy, our self-interest, which is pride. I wanted to remind us that our mission this year, our focus this year, it's you matter to God, you matter to us. Even though we have to have social distancing, we can still call one another, let one another know that. You matter to God. You matter to us. And we need to ask God to help us. Well, today's scripture is taken from John chapter 9. John chapter 9. About Jesus healing the man born blind. We're going to kind of summarize this passage. And then we're going to look at the interesting thing about the scripture. It's that the Pharisees focus on the method of how the man born blind was healed. They were asking so many times, how? How do you get healed? How do you get healed? They focus so much on that method rather than focus on who. Instead of how, they should focus on who, which is the healer. Then we're going to talk about sometimes our own self-interest blind us to see our need for God, just like the Pharisees. And sometimes it also blind us to see the need that others have for God. And then we're going to look at Jesus come back and again and again to heal, to bring healing to the man born blind. In a moment, I'm going to explain more. Then we're going to look at two examples about how humility, instead of feeling prideful and self-interest, how being humble would help us. How replacing it with humility help us to align with God. And what kind of action do we take that we can draw closer to God? And so those were the number of things. One, it's that we're going to look at instead of how, we're going to look at who. Second, we're going to see that pride blinds us from seeing our own need and also other people's need for God. Then the third thing we're going to see is that Jesus did come back again and again to heal. Then we're going to look at two examples about how humility help us align with God. So John chapter 9, fearful mere passage. Jesus and his disciple passed by a man that was born blind. 
And the disciples ask, Jesus, is this the parents of this man that who sinned? Or this man in sin? And Jesus said, no, neither the parents sin or the man sin. Sometimes, if you pause it in here for a moment, sometimes when we face difficulties or when we see certain things that are certain challenges, we would right away have a certain perspective about why. Jesus had a very different perspective. Jesus' perspective was neither the parents or the man's sin. He looked at it as an opportunity that God can be glorified. Particularly in today, there's so many things that we could ask why we could blame. Just like the disciples blaming who? Who sinned? Jesus had a different perspective teaching us. Look at it. How can we learn from it? How can God be glorified? Just a quick reminder for that. Then if you imagine you are the man born blind, you're laying there, you're kneeling there and begging, and your ears very sensitive, are very sensitive. And all you hear is this conversation. And then you hear, and then you feel wet on your eyelid. And then you hear the man said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. Well, nothing else you can do. You go to the pool of Siloam and wash your eyes. And that's what this man born blind. His ear is very sensitive. They are very sensitive. And it must be very strange for him. God used a totally different method. If we pause here for a moment, sometimes God answers us very differently. But this man, instead of just saying stop and moving all of that, he obey, And he go to the pool of Siloam and wash it. And he was able to see. Then when he went home, his neighbor recognized him and said, Are you the man born blind? He said, Yes, that's me. Now I can see. Then he asked him, How did that happen? Well, this man spit on the mud, put it on my eye, asked me to go wash it, and I did. And then I could see. Wow, that is amazing. And then they took him to see the Pharisees. Quite interesting, the Pharisees asked a number of times, how? Bring your parents, how? How did that happen? They were even divided among themselves. How did it happen? There's no way a sinner can heal. But they also couldn't believe somebody healed on the Sabbath. They were quite upset. They were divided. One thing we can learn from this is that instead of asking how, what is the method? Sometimes we look at what is the method. We forgot about who did the healing, which is God, Jesus Christ, the healer. There are a lot of circumstances in our lives that we so focus on the how, but forget God is in control. And not only that, these Pharisees, they are also blocking others from coming to Christ. And they're also blocking themselves. They do not see their own need for God. So they keep asking about how. So as the story goes, the parents of the man born by came, and they were afraid of the Pharisees. So they said, well, he's of age. You can ask him. And they did. And they also get quite upset. Because they think that this man born blind was educating them. Because this man said, I don't know who this Jesus is. All I know was that I was blind, but now I can see. Here's the third part that we need to notice. It's that after all that is done, Jesus seek this blind man out who can now see. He seek him out. He seek him again. And he said, do you want to know who this man is? And he said, yes. Well, it is I who's talking to you. And he bowed down and worshiped him. Jesus said, I came so that the blind can see. And those who are blind, they are already guilty of that because they claim that they can see. What is interesting in this point is that Jesus come back again and again and bring healing. He first bring physical healing. Now he's coming to him and help him to see 
and spiritual healing now. What an amazing Christ. Sometimes we think that because of certain things, he would want us to stay away from us. But no, he came back again and again to try to, to heal us. We owe it to him. What a wonderful grace. Well, here's two examples that I wanted to draw our attention. Letting go of our self-interest, letting go of our pride, we got to replace it with humility. The first story I wanted to draw our attention is in Luke 19, 1 to 10. Luke 19, 1 to 10, which is Jesus called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is the chief tax collector. One thing that stood out is that he was quite short. So when he heard Jesus coming, he decided to climb up on a tree to see him. And Jesus saw him and say, come down, I'm going to come to your house and have dinner with you. And then Zacchaeus changed. He said, I'm going to give half of my possession to the poor and I'm going to repay four times the people that I cheated. What do we learn from this? It's that a slight move of humility. Jesus is already there. Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector. He has so much pride, but he let go of his self-interest, let go of his pride. He decided to align with Christ. He decided to take on humility. Chief tax collector, climb up on a tree. A very, very little move. Jesus is already there to meet him. What can we learn from this? When we let go of our self-pride, is that sometimes all we need to do is align with God with humility. Just a very, very little move that we have towards God. God is already there to meet us. Sometimes we think that God cannot forgive our sins. Sometimes we think that there's no way God could bless us. Sometimes we think that there is no way God could meet us. But Zacchaeus, he aligned with God. He humbled himself just a little bit of move. He moved closer to God. He climbed on a tree. What a humility. And Jesus ready to meet with him. Final story that I wanted to bring us to a close. It's from Luke chapter 7, 1 to 10. Luke 7, 1 to 10. The story of Jesus cure the centurion servant. Very familiar story. The centurion who's overseeing the land. They are coming from Rome. They took orders from Rome. And the Jews, the elders of the Jews, see that his servant is sick and he was quite concerned and his servant is about to die. So they go to Jesus and they say that, well, this is a good man. He deserved you to heal him. Pay attention to that. He deserved you to heal him. Because he was so good to us. He helped us to build a synagogue. And then when Jesus coming close, going to us, the centurion's home, he sent a servant there. He said, I don't deserve you to come. Pay attention. Second time, the word deserve. I don't deserve you to come. He had a he had an actual picture of who he is, his need for God. He said, I don't deserve you to come. Can you imagine a centurion? People's idea that Christ, he deserved you to heal them. But he had the right picture of who Christ is. That Christ, you are God. I don't deserve you to come. And as a matter of fact, he used the word worthy. He said, I'm not even worthy. For you to come. Deserve, deserve, and worthy. And then he said that you only have to say a word, my servant will be cured. And Jesus said, I've never seen that kind of faith. He had a real picture, had an accurate picture of who he is in Christ. He let go of his self interest and pride, centurion. In the world, in that kind of a world, he's actually above Christ. When other people look at it, who's Christ? They're above. But no, he has a real picture of who Christ is. Christ is actually above him. He let go of his pride. Even people saying that Christ, he deserves your cure, your healing. But the centurion said, no, I don't deserve. I'm not even worthy for you to come. And his servant got healed. Humility. Humility. So today 
It's just a couple points. I wanted to uh, bring us to a summary. One is that sometimes we see challenges. Instead of blaming or asking all these questions, should we look at Christ? How can we use that to glorify you? Second thing, it's that the Pharisees are so focused on the method. How does this man born blind get healed? Rather than looking at who. Instead of how, look at who. Who is in control in our situation today? Instead of how can we, in addition of how can we be safe, how can we socially isolated and all of that, we look at who. Then third thing, it's like Christ, we need you. Don't let our self ply blind our need. Sometimes we think that, no, 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 we don't really have much need. They're not essential. But just think about it. Every single breath that we take, we need God. It's God allow us. That's grace. God allowed us. God allow us to see. Then third thing is that when we notice our need, do we notice other people's need? Do we point other people to Christ or stopping them? Fourth thing, Christ keep coming again and again to bring healing. Just like he did. He healed the man born blind physically. Then he come back to restore him spiritually connected with Christ. Do we trust that this is a God that loves us this much? And then the two examples. One is that Zacchaeus, little move, aligning with God, humility, little move of climbing on a tree. Christ is already there waiting. Do we do this little move each and every single day, each and every single moment? Little move towards God. God is already there to bring salvation. Little move. And then do we have, just like the centurion, we have a real picture of who we are. Notice that we don't deserve. But then Christ, you're the one. Despite how the world see you or us, we have an accurate picture by the help of the Holy Spirit. So here's the passage. You're welcome to take some time to meditate on it more. And then before that, let me close in prayer. Our Father, we give thanks for this time. Despite our platform, you allow us to meet together. We give thanks. Help us to be like the story. Just make little moves that you're already there. Help us to be able to come before you with our need. Reveal to us our need for you. Lord, we are not that big. We need you. And help us, Lord, to focus who you are rather than how, but who you are. And use those opportunities to glorify you. Lord Jesus, we give thanks for today meeting with us. Keep us safe this week. Help us to go back to that story. Lord, we are now can see you came to us and we receive you. Even the grace of allowing us to come to you. Lord, help us to treasure. Help us to always rely on you. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here's the passage and here's those lessons. I hope that you enjoy that. Have a good week. Blessings to you. Bye-bye.